Earlier today, MLB The Show put out a blog for all the new Diamond Dynasty changes coming into the next year, and a lot of them I actually think are really good changes. Let's dive into them and see exactly what they're going to be changing. So the first point is probably one of the most important for most people, is that sets, in a sense, are coming back. They're not calling them sets anymore, but they're calling them seasons. Unlike the show 23, where we had both sets and seasons, where there were two sets for every season, this is just going to be one season, and it's going to be one set. It's basically becoming the same word. Each one of these seasons are going to last 12 weeks long, and each season will have its own grind that you will need to do. So once we see the end of one season, going into the next one, you're going to start seeing lower overall cards that you have to then work your team up with again. Similar to Emily The Show 23, when the new season begins, cards that you used in the previous season you can no longer use. Like I said, sets and seasons have now become the same thing, so anything from season one cannot be used from season two. However, there are four exceptions with that. We saw one wild card slot in MLB The Show 23, and it seems they've taken a lot of feedback from that, and they've upped it to four now. So when you're going into Season 2 for this year's game, you could bring four players with you. I would assume that would be probably 99 overalls. According to this blog, you're going to start the season with one wild card slot, but as you progress the Season XP reward path, you are able to unlock up to three more. We don't know how the grind is really going to look for this yet. However, there is the opportunity to unlock up to three more, uh, starting from just the one when the season begins. Similar to MLB The Show 23, there are still going to be those core cards and core card collections similar to this Vladimir Guerrero Jr. here. Now, we have been confirmed that this is not going to be the live series collection. That's going to be a completely separate program, but those cards are going to be core as well. The interesting thing I saw in this blog is that there's a new thing called Cornerstone Cards. So basically, the way it works is at the beginning of every season, they give you a free pack of four players. Now, these are the four players that they had an example of. You have Nolan Arenado, Byron Buxton, Kodai Senga, and Greg Matt. Now, these are essentially captains that give your team boosts depending on what type of player that they are. They haven't released what these boosts are yet. However, I do feel like it's going to be something relating to what they're good at in that position, where you have a guy like Greg Maddox, where he might be more of like your control type player, it'll boost your control, where a guy like Byron Buxton might be more power and fielding oriented. Now, they do say you can only use one of four of these players. However, I would assume that there was some type of exchange where, let's say, you chose Byron Bucks and you either didn't like him or like his boost. I would assume you'd be able to exchange him out for another one, but that's yet to be confirmed. Looking more into free packs, it looks like at the beginning of every season, every single player just for logging into the game will receive a five-pack starter bundle in their inventories. These are probably just going to be your standard the show packs that you would typically see, but it's at least something to get you started as you're trying to build a new team moving forward. Another good feature that they're bringing back are the Head Start Rewards. So if you don't remember what those are in MLB The Show 23, if you finish certain things, you are able to like have a head start going into the next season. So for example, if you completed like the set collections or the XP path, you would receive a certain amount of rewards going into the next season to give you that little bit of a head start. They are bringing that back for MLB The Show 24, and I think this is a really good addition to bring. So one thing that they are harping on a lot is that there is a new content schedule. It's going to be one season for every 12 weeks. They stated that at the beginning of the game, at the launch, they anticipate some of the highest rated season one cards to be at a 91 overall, and as the season progresses, you'll start to see a bit more of an increase as the season goes on, all the way up to 99 overall. Now, they did say that they are reducing the amount of high rated diamonds at launch. However, I assume we'll see that a bit more towards the end of the year. However, going into season two, they are going to be bringing back lower overall diamonds that you could use again. This is a bit of a unique thing. I'm curious how they would execute this. I hope it doesn't like kill like the, the want to grind for the game because if you're using an all 99 team and then season two hits and you can't use all those guys anymore, now you're forced to be using 91s, 92s. Is that something that people are not going to like? I'm curious how people are going to respond to this when this happens, but if it's executed in a certain way, I do feel like this could be a really good feature to have. I feel like restarting the lower overalls also allows you to use different players at different tiers so you're not using the same people the entire year with essentially the same stats but with just different card arts. Now one thing I did notice in this screenshot from the Season 1 XP Reward Path is that Diamond Duos are no more and they are bringing back what were headliners. That was basically what Diamond Duos were, but there were two players rather than one. They are coming back to the one player headliner pack. And then looking at what we see for the wheel spin rewards at the end of the XP Path for Season 1, it looks like the coveted pack that you want to get is that 90 plus live series. Now of course that's absolutely going to help you out for, you know, coming in that live series collection. We all know there's a couple teams that are going to be super 
super expensive, guys that are going to be basically untouchable for the first few months. This could be a really good way to boost that team early. They are bringing back the Chase Pack, as you can see with Chase Pack 1 there, and they are having this, it's called the Vault Choice Pack. I'm curious if that's going to be like players you could use, or if that's going to be player equipment that you would put on like a created player. Now, they did state in this highlighted portion below that they are going to be focusing on online rewards for the early portion of the game. So if you are an offline player, this may be some unfortunate news for you. However, I would assume that as this, as the year goes on, many seasons, Conquest and Showdown will start to see better rewards. Pretty much to where, where ranked events and BR are kind of at. I don't see the offline modes ever like fully matching them. However, I do think and do hope that these rewards are at least somewhat comparable to what we would see out of ranked BR and events. So one thing that they have announced as well is that Team Affinity is getting a small change as well. Instead of seeing one Team Affinity per season, we are now seeing three Team Affinities per season, each one being 30 cards apiece, one for each team. And they did announce Brian Dozier as a returning legend to this game. As you can see, their time scale right now for the Team Affinities is Chapter 1 is at launch, Chapter 2 would be by mid-April, and then Chapter 3 is going to be at some point in May, probably mid to late May. To, to prepare us for season two. They also look like they're bringing back some of the older card arts. As you can see, the Takashi series, Vladimir Guerrero. I do think bringing back these older series are, is a good idea. These cards are probably one of the nicer cards we've ever seen. And there's a possibility we see animations on them this year, which we didn't see in MLB The Show 22. So it looks like for Team Affinity, they are going to be bringing back vouchers for doing specific things. They are bringing back online progress as well, or online specific progress as well for Team Affinity. And of course, the offline uh, grind, the offline moments, conquest, and show will be available as well for Team Affinity. Now, this is a good thing. They kind of did that about halfway through the year for MLB The Show 23, uh, but having online rewarding early in the game is a really good thing to have, and it helps really progress the speed of Team Affinities for an online player. One thing I forgot to mention is that probably the biggest thing in all of this is that a flawless in BR is no longer 12-0. and 0. They have bumped that number down to 10-0. and 0. Now, one thing that I do notice here in the wording is that Battle Royale Flawless will start at 10-0 and 0 for the best reward pack. So I don't know if they plan on increasing that later in the year or if, if it starts at 10-0 and 0 and you receive additional awards for a certain amount of wins over 10-0. and 0. This is something I'm kind of curious about. I'm, uh, you know, Is there something that they're trying to add to this or is it basically just going to stay at 10-0 and 0 and that's going to be final? They did also say that ranked programs will have sellable rewards. That is a big change from last year. Uh, they were no sell pretty much the whole way through until the very end of the year. And they are also including a program exclusive player uh, that you can earn either, either in solo or co-op gameplay. Events are now lasting for two weeks rather than the one week or two weeks like they used to, but now it's two weeks flat no matter what. And at the same time, they also said that every single week, once per week, you will receive a free pack. They have not really said what this pack will be. However, they're saying there's going to be some theme drops throughout the MLB season, uh, but it's probably going to be something relatable to what's going on in the season. They said there's a hint for the first theme freebie. You know, where will the first MLB games be played? Uh, they're playing in Korea. They're playing in Japan. It'll probably be something relating to that series and based how those players have been playing. So when you scroll to the very end, they did drop this before we go near spoiler. They sent out a blurred picture of this player. Now, this is obviously a Hall of Fame player. His plaque is in the background. Now, this card is actually a really good design, in my opinion. I know it's blurred. You really can't see it. But the question is, who is this player? My guess is Willie Mays. I think the plaque looks like him, uh, his actual plaque, even though it's a little blurred. The stance is very similar to the picture that I'm going to pull up. Now, I think this is Willie Mays. Who do you think it is? Is it Ted Williams? It'd be great to have him back. Or is it a new legend we've never seen before? Now, I think I do want to mention that this is not full details of Diamond Dynasty. I think this is just kind of like the bare minimum basics of them telling us what's going on. Uh, they are going to have a live content premiere March 14th over on Twitch and YouTube, the same times they always do, where they do a full dive into the mode, and we'll see how the full workings of it and what exactly it is that we're going to be doing for this year. But that is going to be all for today's video, y'all. If you do like these changes or do not like these changes, leave a comment below saying what you do or do not like. I appreciate you guys watching this, and I'll catch you the next one.